Rose is next. Hi, David. I'm actually in Texas, so I um, live uh, in the, the DFW area, Dallas, Fort Worth. That's where my wife is right now, by the way. So if you see her, tell her I said hi. I will. You know, I'm a fan of Dave Ramsey and have been for a long time until, you know, through Growth Day, um, you know, met you. And, and I've been very intrigued by, you know, what I've learned and applying. And uh, just to kind of give you some context, um, I, I applied, you know, over 20 years ago, the Dave Ramsey methodology and other um, learning set that I picked up. And I was able to um, retire this year. Um, and uh, so right now, I'm a little bit overwhelmed in the sense of, um, because all my money is, is uh, well, I have Fidelity, I have Charles Schwab, and of course I have my checking and, and my savings. And then <clears throat> I was fortunate that I'll be able, because I uh, was eligible for retirement based on my years with the company, that I will be able to keep, uh, have an extra five years or so to keep all my stock and what have you. So all that being said, I've been on calls with um, Fidelity and they connected me with a couple of financial advisors to select. And, you know, in some of your books I've read and, and even uh, the Ramsey around um, whether you need one or not, and then the fee that they charge. So because it's, it's a lot, right, that uh, it's a complex year for me with regards to taxes and kind of, um, the longer term to really leverage and maximize, you know, what I've been able to, to save and, and invest through um, uh, infidelity. What's your recommendation? Um, is it to, you know, seek out that financial advisor and, and, and get and, and have them the, the, the planner rather, uh, or is going through your, your plan of these 13 methods um, will provide the guidance because I'm not too savvy on the stocks and what have you. I've been on the target plan, as you mentioned, as part of the, the company that I work for. So let me just pause there because I said a mouthful. Yeah. Well, first of all, congr congratulations. Let's give her a round of applause because you look very young and you're retired. So bravo. You did everything right. Um, yeah. So congratulations. That's well, just a quick note, David, is that I'm 57 and I have, I'll be 58 in June. So I'm not quite... Um, you know, the, the world retirement age, if you will. So um, that's why, you know, I, I'm very vulnerable and, and blessed to be able to do it, to, to have been able to do this. So it's now what's on my mind is, you know, how do I manage all this to ensure that, of course, I mean, I had the analysis done up front before I made my decision, but it's just making sure that, um, you know, not be foolish and, and that it's managed appropriately. Yeah, 100%. So again, congratulations, because 57, 58 is, is a young age to retire, which is fantastic. Thank uh, you. A huge privilege to basically retire five to 10 years sooner than the average person. Uh, because the beauty of that is that you are healthy mm -hmm. and you're young. And so now you can really go enjoy your, you have, you have, the, you have the ultimate affluence, which is time affluence. Right. People say anything else about money. It's actually about time. You basically right. just watch your freedom. So, yeah. and, and you know, I, I love that you read the Dave Ramsey books, and they're great too. And Dave Ramsey's fantastic. And I, you know, I think there's no such thing as uh, only being one good teacher in the world. There are a lot of good teachers. So, learning from multiple people is powerful. Like that's kind of one of the geniuses I think of of Growth Day is that Brendan's mm -hmm. brought together all of these different teachers. So here's what, and I, I don't know all of Dave Ramsey's philosophy. I just know that he's, he's got a lot of great content and his big thing is getting out of debt. And the whole beauty of getting out of debt is the sooner you get out of debt and then you build savings, the sooner you can retire. And that's, yeah. you know, the number one thing I can tell all of you who may be working towards retirement. And, and this is what I saw being a financial advisor at Morgan Stanley. My clients who retired at your age, typically between I'd say 55 and 60, the ones who are able to retire young, it's because they had no, they, typically they had no debt, they paid their home off, mm -hmm. they had no credit card debt, saved money, but it's the debt. It's, the, it's paying off the debt that gets you financially free 10 mm -hmm. years sooner. Yeah. And that 10 years getting to, re it's not that you have to retire, but mm -hmm. having the option of retiring early is a game changer. Right. Because then if you ever want to go back to work, <laughs> you know, you're just working for the fun. Yeah. I mean, I, that's where I am right now. I'm just working for the fun, you know, mm -hmm. and that's, I'm here today for the fun. Um, so to answer your question specifically, let me ask you a question. Have you read Smart Women Finish Rich? I actually just got that book. I, I read your, the millionaire one. And yeah. so as I was going through your list, as you told your story, right, about the couple that walked in and 
And so I was going through your list and I was going, check, 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 check. Yes. So where I'm at is, you know, when I got to the piece about um, on the millionaire book around the investments, right? You mentioned Fidelity, you mentioned Vanguard and, and others. And um, so it's really about um, just, you know, what, what's that next step in terms of ensuring that my money continues to work, right? Because I'm not working anymore. So here's the money that I've been able to save. And of course, I have my assets and everything. And I am debt free. And that was another thing that I worked for was to, to be debt free at age 55 and retire then. But I just didn't have peace about retiring at 55. So I kept on right and, until this year was the year. But um, I'm debt free. And so now I have, it's kind of like, okay, now, I need to make sure that this money keeps working, right? Um, and, right so I'm going to give, give you specific. I'm going I'm to give you specific things here. So okay. first thing I'm going to tell you to do is go read "Smart Women Finish Rich." Okay. The reason is that "Smart Women Finish Rich" is a full blown financial planning book okay. that literally takes you by the hand. What I would do if I was your personal financial advisor. Mm -hmm. An important part of that book is how to hire a financial advisor. Okay. What questions to ask a financial advisor. And what and hundreds of thousands of copies of this book have been given out by financial advisors. And I actually believe that when you reach your age in retirement, you should hire a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. However, and I say this as somebody who owns a financial planning company, I never want people to go hire financial advisors who have not yet got some financial education. Mm -hmm. Because I want you to find a good financial advisor. So when you read through Smart Women Finish Rich and you read through the section on how to hire a good financial advisor and you know the questions to ask, then no one can take advantage of you. Mm -hmm. And you'll find the right financial advisor. And it's valuable to have a financial advisor. You said you're 50, you say you're 57, 58? Yes, I'll be 58 in June. It's valuable to have a financial advisor when you reach retirement. And the reason is, in most cases, you, you've never, have you ever retired before? No. So, so you're, mo and I'm, I'm, most people have never retired before, right? When they retire, it's their first time retiring. Yeah. And so all this stuff comes at you and it's complicated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do I do with my 401k plan? Do I roll it over to an IRA account? How do I invest the money? David, mm -hmm. I, have money I have money at Fidelity and Schwab. Do I keep money in two locations? When mm -hmm. do I start pulling money out of my retirement accounts? When do I use taxable money versus tax deferred money? Mm -hmm. When do I take social security? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's so, am I in the right investments? <laughs> Yes. How do I know if I'm spending too much each year or not spending enough? And all of that stuff's complicated. Now, the reality is that a good financial advisor, this is all they do all day long, right? Mm -hmm. Like a good financial advisor does meets with clients and they do four or five of these meetings a day. And that's literally all they do. Mm -hmm. So that's what a good financial advisor does. A good financial advisor will help you use your money to live your best life make sure you don't run out of it, make sure it grows faster than the rate of inflation. That's what a good financial advisor does. The, the challenge is if you run into a bad financial advisor, because a bad financial advisor will sell you garbage products, bad investments, could steal your money. Those are the rare cases. But the problem is you run into one bad financial advisor, uneducated, one bad financial advisor can ruin all the good work you've done. Yes. And that's now, my, that's my concern. So, you know, I, I will say this Fidelity and Schwab, two major fantastic financial service companies. You work with someone at Fidelity or Schwab, their chances are extremely high. One, they're a decent advisor. Two, there's what's called compliance. Mm -hmm. Meaning like nothing shady is going to happen working with someone in a major firm like Fidelity or Schwab. If anything shady ever happened, that firm's going to be liable. So, so I could tell you to go to Fidelity, go to a Fidelity office or a Schwab office, and that somebody in one of those offices could put together a financial plan for you, and more than likely be more than what you need. Depending mm -hmm. on the net worth, though, what happens at these firms is they refer you then out to another financial advisor. That's what happens. So, and so I won't I won't say what your net worth is, but I know what your net worth has to be for them to do that. Right. So, at a certain level of net worth they actually don't typically have you work with an internal advisor. They refer you to three advisors, mm -hmm. right? 
Mm -hmm. Now, those three advisors then you need to go meet with and see which mm -hmm. one you like. Right. Now, I will tell you this. It's extremely difficult to be one of those three advisors that was referred to. Mm -hmm. So Fidelity and Schwab have a massive process by which they determine who they're sending you to. Because mm -hmm. they don't want to refer you to someone that's not going to do a good job. Because mm -hmm. that would be a disaster. Also, when they refer you to an advisor, like, I mean, I'm giving you behind the scenes how this all works. You have right. money at Fidelity and you move, they refer you to an RIA, registered investment advisor, because that's who they typically always refer you to. You won't be moving your money out of Fidelity. Right. That RIA is going to work with you to create a financial plan mm -hmm. and then show you how to best invest your money at Fidelity. Right. Same thing at Schwab. That Schwab RIA is going to, you know, do the exact same thing. Now, mm -hmm. ultimately, what you probably want to do is consolidate it all. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think having an account at Fidelity and Schwab, it's just, it's two places, mm -hmm. right? So then you got to go look at two different statements. You got to track two different accounts. It's much easier to have all your money invested in one location, which can be totally diversified. Mm -hmm. And ideally you go and meet with one of those three advisors and you can really relate to them and you really like them. Mm -hmm. And then you work with them closely and they'll do these things I've talked about today. They'll create your net worth statement. They will run your numbers for you. And then the critical component of working with that financial planner is not just having them give you the investment plan because anyone can give you an investment plan. I mean like, okay, Rose, your money's here, but it needs to go here. Mm -hmm. The next part of the job is for them checking in with you every six months and meeting with you and going through how it's doing yeah. and going through with you. How are you doing? What's changed in your life? Um, so that you use this money to go, live your best retirement, ROR, return on retirement. Mm -hmm. But I want you to go read Smart When Finish Rich, not come trying to sell another book. You can go get a library, get the updated book because I would prefer that you go meet with those advisors after you've read that book. Okay. I'd even bring the book with you. They'll know that you know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I actually showed, because I met with one yesterday, one today, and I showed it, I told them that, um, you know, I, I read your books, David. And so I showed him. So I knew, you know, kind of going into uh, a few questions. And then I do have the, the smart women finish rich, which I just got. So I'm going to read that. And then um, the other question is, uh, what's the realistic fee? You know, I asked both of them that I met yesterday, and they said it's a 1% off the account amount of accounts that they manage. Is that realistic? Yeah, that's totally right. That's totally right in the ballpark of where it is. Depending on your net worth, I would tell you it's a half of 1% to 1.5%. Mm -hmm. and, and right now, I think most people are running right around 1%, and it's around 1% on top of the management fees of the actual products themselves. So mm -hmm. one of the things you want to do when you meet with a financial advisor and that financial advisor says to you, hey, Rose, it's 1%. The next question is, is it 1% all inclusive? Because it, it won't be. <laughs> and then if it's not all inclusive, can you show me and break out what the fees are of the investments that you're recommending? Now, anyone who's worth a grain of salt as a, as a registered investment advisor should be showing you both of those things. Because what would ha should happen is they'll show you the they'll show you the portfolio. Mm -hmm. This is all so easy to do right now because it's all computerized, and they'll show you, hey Rose, these mutual funds blended together have a cost structure of 0.25, mm -hmm. quarter of one percent. I'm just giving that as an example, and then we charge one percent, so it's actually 1.25. Mm -hmm. Then you know, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's right. That's right in line and. You know, you can go, uh, lots of people say, show you all the math, like oh, if you don't pay 1%, you'll save so much money. Well, yes or no, because if you don't invest the money well, you will actually cost you a whole lot more than 1%. Uh, in smart women or smart couples, I can't remember which one, I actually break out the data that shows the value that a financial advisor brings to the table. Like they've done research on this, a good financial advisor with a good plan. Uh, the okay. value they bring the table is somewhere between three to four percent annually. Okay. So, um, how was that helpful? Yes, it was, and I'll certainly share any successes as I go through this. I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's been very valuable. Good. I just I just want to say one last thing here. 
when you hire a financial advisor, you are not delegating the responsibility of your money to them. And what I mean by that is at the end of the day, you hire somebody, you still got to watch it. You still got to stay on top of it. And if, and if you ever hire a financial advisor who is not being respectful to you, um, isn't patient, <laughs> isn't okay answering your questions, um, doesn't make you feel good, you, then you go get a new financial advisor. Got it. Got it. Well, thank you. Well, hey, I certainly would love to have you if you're still in that business. <laughs> I appreciate that. But this is that version of that because I don't take clients one-on-one -on -one anymore. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Randy, you're up. Hey, great, David. I appreciate it. Uh, and great stuff today. Uh, I'm yeah. 66 and I'm COVID retired, if you will. Basically, the, uh, the job went away and I'm just kind of looking at what I want to do going forward. But I'm just wondering what different advice would you give for folks that are, say, in my age bracket, maybe even a little older, who are starting to look at the money they've got currently invested in 401s and looking at the tax impact of that. You know, just kind of mapping out the next five to 10 years of financials versus being 20 years old, looking at the next 40 years. Okay. Um, I'm so glad I called on you. And I'm so glad you asked this question. Do you mind sharing roughly what your age is? I'm 66. 66. Okay. First of all, just put this in perspective. Um, most of my talks are for people your age because my financial service company, uh, all the talks I do are for people, we typically our clients are between the ages 16 and 85. That's when people retire. So let me give you as quick as I could, almost like a mini little seminar on what I say in these talks. Okay. Um, but everybody can learn from it. Okay. So there are, and this is not just me, it says this is like the financial service industry. There are three stages to retirement traditionally. Stage one is what's called the go go years. The go go years are from age 60 to roughly 70, first decade. Then there are the slower go, then there's the second, second stage, the slower go years. Those are typically 70 to 80. And then there's the third stage, which I refer to often as won't go. Now, typically that's the man who won't go because honestly, it's usually the man who, if he lives to be over in his eighties, doesn't have the help to go on the same trips that his wife wants to go to if they're still married. So what I share with our clients is this, the number one reason you do a financial plan is to do not treat these 30 years of retirement, because that's about an average retirement is somewhere between 20 to 30 years. What the financial service industry has done is scare people so much about running out of money that retirees who did a good job of saving money don't spend any. And what, the, what I believe is that in retirement, you want to get, you want a financial plan done, ideally a financial advisor you can trust, because you want to see in black and white permission to start spending money. Most of our clients, and this is not a solicitation on any part, I'm not asking for any of you to hire us. Most of our clients, the issue is not, are they going to run out of money? Most of our clients, they just, they need to go spend more money, believe it or not. So what I would tell you because you're 66 is start thinking through like, what do you really want to do with your life? And once you've got the plan done, start enjoying the money and have fun. Yeah, go have fun with it. You're going to be able to do things at 66 that you can't do at 76. It's just a fact. And, and the other thing I'd say to anybody here, because I talk about this, is that the next 10 years of your life at any age, at any age, statistically, the next 10 years of your life are the healthiest years of your life. At any age. So you need to treat these next 10 years like they're, 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 they're your years. Here's the beauty of where you are right now. You have, hopefully, Randy says, like you got money. You have health. You have friends. You have family. Like in your 60s, you have all these things around that you can enjoy. So I know we can't all travel right now, but as soon as you've got the vaccine in you and you, and you can do the things you want to do, start doing them. Don't put things off. And then, you know, to not be overly specific, but there comes a point in time where it makes a lot of sense to roll money from a 401k plan into an IRA account. 
So I just talked about how you build your wealth with a 401k plan, but ultimately you should move it into an IRA account in your name. And then it's very important that you have the beneficiaries up to date, whoever the beneficiaries need to be. And there should be contingent beneficiaries there. Often people have their spouse's beneficiary, but they haven't put contingent beneficiaries in case their spouse passes away. And often 401k plans, the old ones were not set up with contingent beneficiaries. All of you should be checking out, making sure your beneficiaries are up to date. Um, especially if you're in a second marriage, sometimes people don't get around to taking, I don't know how this is possible, but they don't take their exes off the beneficiaries, believe it or not. Um, so yeah, these are all important things. So I don't know, Randy, I hope, I hope that was helpful. I, absolutely, it was great. It, and it's, I think the key thing there is to, to enjoy where we are and look at what we're doing now and not be so worried. Because I, I, I think you're right. I think so many folks that I've uh, talked to and, and heard from are saying, well, you know, if you live to be 90, you got to think about how much money that's there. But when you really start thinking about it, do you want to just sit around and do nothing for the next 25 years waiting to see if you've got any money left at 90? Yeah. And the last thing you didn't ask me about social security, Randy, but I, I, I'm a huge proponent of taking the exact opposite of what people say. Our clients who don't need social security, I push them to take social security early. And people, well, but I don't need the money. I know you don't need the money. Great. So travel first class, buy a new car, give the money to the grandchildren, take a cruise. Like if cruises ever come back, they will, <laughs> you know, then just go enjoy it. It's like extra icing on the cake. So I throw that out there. Too. No, I, absolutely. I did the math on that back last uh, summer when I got into this COVID retirement. And I looked at if I delayed for another six years drawing my social security, it would take me 12 more years after that to get back to zero. And I just said, that makes no sense. So we started drawing. Makes right no away. Sense. Yeah. The government wants you to wait, which is a great sign that you should take it early also. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. All Thanks right. Lot, Thanks, Randy. Great to have you here. I appreciate the question. Hi, Michelle. Hi, David. How are you? Thank you so much. You're amazing. I'm loving these trainings with you. So thank you. For thank you. What you're offering. So quick question. I'm going to stick with focus. I could, I could sit here and talk to you all day long, but I'm going to stick with focus. So I have a full-time job, like where I, you know, it's, I'm a director in a hospital. So I have a lot of employees and tasks. And then I also am an entrepreneur coach and I have two daughters, preteen girl and a teen girl and a lot of activities. And I find myself, you know, I'm doing all the things that Brendan like recommends, you know, I have my high performance planner. I actually have a planner and then I have my high performance planner. Like I'm a planner, right? You have to plan. But I find that sometimes like I forget about what my goals are. Like, even though I have, like, I have these goals, I lose focus. And so like, do you have these lists for like all the different places, like, like your personal, your work, your home, your, all the stuff, like, how do you do that? So I don't do it that way because okay. I too have written all this stuff. I, I, I have the journals. I have Brendan's planner. It's a great planner. I have so many things, right? And exactly right. what you're talking about. I have so many of these, you know, <laughs> that I write in, um, but, but what I do, let me, I actually have a couple processes that are very simple. One is I have a journal at home that I write in every day. So that's where I do my personal talking to myself journal. This here is my work, work journal. Like here, this, this is what I'm using when I'm working. So I've got my, I've got my work, I've got a work journal. I've got a personal journal. I've been writing in personal journals for, since my twenties, mm -hmm. um, since I heard the, the story, since I heard, I think it was Tony Robbins say, if your life is worth living, your life is worth recording. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, it's just, it's such a gift to be able to go back and read your journals. I go back and I reread my journals all the time. Where was I a year ago? What was I thinking about two years ago? What was I, because we have reoccurring themes. And a lot of times it takes us a long time to actually hear our reoccurring themes. But when it's on paper and you're like, oh my God, I've been writing about this for three years. Deal with it already, right? <laughs> so that's number one. Number two, um, I literally, I have three things in my office. I have the yes now list. I have the not now list. They sit on a bulletin board. Then I have a second long piece of paper that is a three-year chart. I'm here and this is what I want to do over the next three years. And that's it. That's what's in my office. Those three things. And I update the yes now list. I'm, oh, I look at the yes now list every single 
it's I can't miss it. It's sitting on a bulletin board, like a ten dollar bulletin board, on my desk in front of my computer. And so it's always there. My family sees it. My kids see it. And um, you know, eventually things get checked off. And then sometimes, like last year, when I got them checked off, I didn't add new things. I checked them off, and I'm like, okay, there's only two more to go. Whereas there, there are times where I'm really pushing myself and I go, okay, it's checked off and I throw a new one up there. So it just depends on where I am at that point in my time. So your five things, your five priorities can be personal. Um, yes. Like different, like you have three businesses, I guess, you know, you could like work and business. I mean, work is different, but you kind of have one list for everything. Yep. I mean, like if you were to look at my list right now, it's, I'll just tell you what it says right now. Like literally my number one is my ankle and the reason, and also I write down my why that's why I have, why am I, why are you serious? Why are you ready to focus on this? So, mm -hmm. you know, everything that I want for my life is revolves around act, about being active. I lived, I moved to Europe so I could travel all over the world. I'm 54. If I can't walk, I can't travel with my wife the way I want to do. So like super big clarity, like I want to be able to just go out and walk with my wife but I really want to be able to ski in a year. I really want to be back on a bike. So I have like all the reasons why I need to do all this work. Like going to physical, I'm, I'm back going to physical therapy five hours a day. After a while, it is not fun and it is boring and it hurts. And the <laughs> rehab this director. So I'm, I actually am the rehab director. So I'm, uh, <laughs> wow. Like, where, 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 are you, where are you located? <laughs> I'm in Sandpoint, Idaho, Northern Idaho. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and, then I, and then I was, you know, everybody's so nice to me at this rehab facility and they're all Italian, you know, they all speak Italian, but some of them speak a little English with me. Um, so, but I've got huge clarity around the why. It's really important to dig in under the why. If you look at, so that's number one. Number two, I happen to be, where, where it's been a six month progress. It's been on the list from last year. It didn't get finished, but we've been working on the audio update to Smart Women Finish Rich. Mm -hmm. By the way, that project, the audio update to Smart Women Finish Rich, because I updated the book and it was it's so much work to do these audio books, has been sitting on the not now list for three years. So it, it was important for me to do it, but it was not important enough for me to do it. But I never forgot about it. The reason the not now list is so important is that there are things you want to do. You don't want to forget about them. I knew I wanted to get it done. But it wasn't a priority the last two years. Finally, it wasn't a priority last year. It's going to get done in the next 90 days. So that's on my list. Growth day is on my list. Now, it, interestingly enough, and here's a great example of how, the, how this works in the real world. Growth day was not on my list on December 29th. December 29th, where's my buddy Brendan, sends me a text. Hey, buddy, can you get on this New Year's Day call with me? What? Sure. I mean... And for anybody but Brendan, the answer is no. I'm on vacation. First of all, I am always on vacation on New Year's. I never work on New Year's. I don't work in the summer. I don't work for the most month of December. But Brendan texts me and I'm literally on vacation. I'm at a spa and, and Elijah's like, you're seriously going to get on this live event with Brendan on New Year's Day? I'm like, yeah, it's Brendan. I love the guy. Okay. I'll Next thing I know, there's this thing called growth day. Buddy, it's just 45 minutes. Once a month. Okay. I've been around long enough to know my buddy, Brandon, who I love. Nothing is 45 minutes. No big deal. I, if I'm going to present to you guys for an hour, I'm going to prepare for 10, right? Like I don't just show up at these things. This is a keynote to the next level. So something like growth day is a great example. This is at minimum a hundred, hundred hours of commitment of my time for the year. I share that with you because when I decided to do growth day, I had to take things off this list. So growth day sitting here at number three. What got moved off this list? Two things got moved off this list when I got hurt and decided to do growth day. I had two books planned. I know how much time those books were going to take. Even though I've got a huge team around me telling me it's not going to, everybody always tells you it's not going to take a lot of time. Everything takes more time than people tell you it's going to take. I don't care how good at this stuff you get. <laughs> Everything takes more time. It's like it's like redoing your house. The person comes over and says, it's going to be a six-month project. Yeah, that meant a year. It's going to cost 50 grand. That meant 100 grand, right? Like whatever it is, things are always, they always take longer and cost more. So point being, when I committed to growth day, I'm like, it's not going to be one of those things that, I, that I'm regretting. I'm going to show up fully present no matter what. 
do the work to deliver to thousands of you because I want to make the impact. This is like a way for me to give back. And, but some, something else has got to come off my list. I have on here a whole, so I'm just literally, you asked the question. I have on here personal finances. I have a whole bunch of specific things that I want to clean up this year related to my family's financial life that are like detail stuff. Partially because I thought I was going to die back in October when I went to an emergency room thinking I had a brain hemorrhage. And I'm like, oh my God, like my wife needs to know where the will is and the insurance and all the stuff I talk about. So there's all these things that are personally related that are on this list that I want to have done this year. And the last thing is extreme family time with my, my parents and my, and my friends back home. So I'm going home now to see my parents who finally got the vaccine. And I'm going to spend a month with my parents. They don't even know that yet, unless my mom's on this call. But I'm like, <laughs> hey, I'm coming to visit you guys. But I'm going to spend a bunch of time with my parents because my mom, my dad's going to be 81 this month. And my mom is, well, my mom won't want me to tell how old she is. But she's also getting close to that age. So I'm going to go home. So that's on my list. And mm-hmm. so a bunch of things are over on the not now list. And um, once these things get done, then the not now list, there might be things that come over there. Sorry, that was a long answer to your question, but I just no, it's it's good, it's good. I just sometimes I just like there there just seems to be so many that is prior like you know that feels like it's a priority, and so I I need to really yeah yeah I have so many projects, and I every week I'm looking at what I'm going to do this week, but I feel like every week it changes, and so I don't get the result that I want as quickly as I'd like to versus maybe just letting more things go and just maybe being a little more hyper-focused on certain tasks is what I'm getting today. Yeah, well, because what happens when everything's a priority, nothing is a priority. Right. And you feel, and I mean, I do pretty good, but I sometimes it's like, oh, I didn't get that done. Or like, you know, you just feel that more of that overwhelm, I guess, that, you could maybe manage a little better if you didn't have, if you use this tool. So I appreciate that. And I'm yeah, grateful that World Day is on your top five because you're bringing it. I appreciate it. Thank you. you. Thank you very, very much. I totally appreciate that. And, you know, I, just so you know, like I know everybody here can relate to what you're saying. Like we're all over scheduled. And we also have, have our cultures about being over scheduled, specifically really like the United States. Some cultures are not about being overscheduled, but the United States is about being overscheduled. And, um, but you don't have to buy into that. You can decide to change. And I think if you, you know, I would exp- I would look at all of this stuff as experimental. You can experiment for 90 days. What if all these things weren't a priority? What if I could only have three priorities? What would the three be? And then just see if in 90 days it making them, you know, does, does life feel better? Are you, feeling more fulfilled, getting more things done, are you happier? See what happens. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember and you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.